Welcome to Deep Dive Defense, military and aerospace enthusiasts. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's video focuses on a next-generation drone weapon recently unveiled by the Iran's IRGC ground forces. This distinct weapon system, based on the US Coyote Block II air defense drone, is notably influenced by the experiences observed from the conflict between Western-supported Ukraine and Russia. This weapon system is an air defense drone designed to intercept one-way attack drones, which often operate at speeds ranging between 100 and 400 kilometers per hour. Given the relatively slow speeds of such attack drones, the IRGC Aerospace Forces Shad Industries had already developed air defense weapons powered by turbojet engines. This propulsion method significantly enhances range, albeit at the cost of reduced cruise speed. One such weapon is the Missile 358, later known as the Shahed 358, an aerial loitering drone designed to target slower moving targets like drones and helicopters. Separate from Iran's domestically designed turbojet powered air defense drones, the country's defense industries organization now developed its own variant of the Coyote air defense drone. It is believed that U.S. forces, which had deployed the Coyote Block II to intercept Iranian made one way attack drones, such as the Shahed 101 in Iraq and Syria, lost some of these drones following unsuccessful interception attempts. Believed to be later found and captured by Iranian aligned local forces, the captured Coyote was apparently handed over to Iran's Defense Industries Organization, which then reverse engineered it. When compared to the Shahed Industries Missile 358 and 359, the Coyote Block II is a much smaller weapon with a correspondingly shorter range. This raises one question. Why would the IRGC ground forces choose a Coyote variant over the Missile 358? The answer lies in the fact that Shahed Industries, the manufacturer of the Missile 358, primarily supplies the IRGC Aerospace Forces. In contrast, the IRGC ground forces are predominantly supplied by the Defense Industries Organization. For the Aerospace Industries Organization, a division of the Defense Industries Organization, developing its own new product is a logical step. Additionally, given the extensive research and development efforts the United States invested in the Coyote Block II, acquiring a captured sample provided a significant advantage in its development. Moreover, the radar horizon typically limits the operational range of such weapons to 30 to 40 kilometers, a range performance well suited for the radar and infrared sensor capabilities available to the IRGC ground forces. Ranges beyond this threshold exceed the tactical level at which the IRGC ground forces are designed to operate. Their primary objective is theater air defense for deployed ground forces. Consequently, the Coyote Block II's shorter range and compact, containerized design make it an ideal choice for the IRGC ground forces. It also provides the Aerospace Industries Organization with a platform to develop and expand a new family of small turbojet-powered drones in the future. The significant threat posed by low-cost one-way attack drones, as well as more advanced systems such as the Israeli Harap, has driven a strong emphasis on this type of threat. In a secondary role, this weapon is also highly effective against slow, medium-altitude, long-endurance surveillance drones and attack helicopters operating near the front lines. Anticipating the changes of future warfare, a weapon is necessary which is capable of repelling saturation attacks by swarms of one-way attack drones. It also needs to remain cost-effective doing so, a criterion the Iranian interpretation of the Coyote Block II fulfills. The design incorporates a simple micro-turbojet engine featuring a single-stage compressor and single-stage turbine. The Iranian variant has an imaging infrared seeker, which is modular and shared across various Iranian weapon systems such as the Tondar, significantly reducing costs. The new similar-sized Tondar SAM is likely made by the same design team and could complement the Iranian Coyote, enabling engagement of fast subsonic targets. Given the importance of quantity in such weapons, only a low-cost design like Coyote and the Hellfire-based Tondar enable widespread high-volume deployment to comprehensively protect ground forces on the front lines. However, the Coyote Block II variant is just the effector component of a larger weapon system. This is why, when the air defense drone was unveiled, other components like the launcher was also displayed. This launcher is designed to carry five containers of the Coyote variant, which are mounted on a Toyota Land Cruiser-based Aris truck made by Iran. 
This configuration provides a reliable, off-road capable launcher for the lightweight weapon while maintaining a high firepower capacity with five coyotes ready for launch. The next critical component for the functional air defense system is a sensor capable of detecting incoming targets. Alongside the launch vehicles, the IRGC ground forces unveiled a new radar system, featuring an unusual cylindrical active array radar, similar in design to the USAN's TPQ-50. But why did the IRGC ground forces opt for this unconventional radar design for this new air defense system? A cylindrical array utilizes digital beam forming to scan 360-degree airspace without requiring any mechanical rotation. One of the key lessons from the Ukraine war is the critical importance of persistent long-term surveillance, particularly during phases of conflict where high-intensity warfare transitions to low-intensity attrition warfare. During this phase, adversaries can exploit downtime and radar sensor operation to launch attacks. This is not just by chance but through electronic intelligence gathering, where passive sensors detect when a specific radar goes offline, creating a window of opportunity for an assault. Therefore, an ideal radar sensor aims to eliminate potential failure points, such as mechanical drives and their bearings, and replaces a single radar frequency energy source with multiple independent ones, as seen in active electronically scanned array ASE, radars. Additionally, the lower the power levels at which the transceiver elements of an AESA radar operate, the less likely it is for its solid-state components to fail. Like the USAN's TPQ-50 radar, the Iranian design is also an L-band AESA radar, which operates at relatively low peak power levels and incorporates several dozen elements within the cylindrical array. Even if a portion of these elements fail, the overall performance of the radar array remains largely unaffected. These types of radars have a relatively short range of around 10 kilometers, but they also feature very low energy consumption. The L-band frequency at which it operates significantly reduces the effectiveness of radar-absorbing materials and structures, compensating for the relatively short range by improved detection of small radar cross-section targets. Additionally, the L-band frequency counters and degrades the shaping techniques used in stealth design. But why pair the Coyote Air Defense Drone, which has a range of several tens of kilometers, with a sensor that operates in the 10-kilometer range class? One key reason is the capability of AESA radars to function as directional data links. Since L-band radars lack sufficient positional accuracy to guide the Coyote close enough to the target for a direct hit, they instead establish a man-in-the-loop data link connection with the Coyote. The drone then uses its imaging infrared seeker, assisted by artificial intelligence, to select and lock onto the target, either automatically or under the control of a human operator. Thus, target detection is not the radar's sole function. It also creates simultaneous 360-degree uplink and downlink connections with several Coyote air defense drones as they approach their targets. This new radar hence integrates two functions and is a very low-cost design, capable of being mounted on the previously mentioned RS truck of the launcher. To fully utilize the long range of the Coyote drone, the system would, in most scenarios, rely on external sensor data for launch. More powerful radar systems from the ground forces, or the other Iranian forces and the integrated air defense system would provide the initial targeting data. The cylindrical array radar would then primarily serve as the missile uplink and downlink, guiding the drones in all directions simultaneously. This enables the system to counter an attacking drone swarm with a swarm of coyotes to hunt them down. The coyote-based weapon system is not limited to aerial targets. It can also engage ground targets, particularly non-line-of-sight targets obscured by terrain. In such cases, the coyote would fly at a higher altitude establish a link with a human operator on the ground, and allow the operator to select a target in man-in-the-loop mode. The drone would then guide itself toward the target by locking its imaging infrared seeker. This functionality also enables a launch on remote interception mode, where external targeting data is used to fully exploit the long range of the coyote type effector enables. Here, the cylindrical array radar serving as a long range data link, as well as the last radar layer, should the system be on its own. In summary, it is these next-generation, low-cost capabilities that make the newly unveiled, yet unnamed system of the IRGC ground forces a true next-generation weapon system. 
It excels in categories such as multiple or swarm launches, counter saturation attacks effectively, and is extremely low cost, enabling widespread deployment. The system also provides extensive large area protection due to the turbojet propulsion of the Coyote Effector, offering a smart and adaptable solution to counter the emerging drone threats expected to be the reality of the front lines in the very near future. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.